You're listening to episode 134 of the Christian Travelers Network. Today's topic is Travel Destinations Fulfilled, based on Deuteronomy chapter 1. Hi, my name is Sarah, and I have a background in theology and a love for travel. Having visited nine different countries and served in five congregations, I wanted to create an environment that discusses and encourages the overlap of my two favorite things, the Lord and travel. And if you have a passion for these things, or wanting to learn how God is such an integral part of our daily adventures, then you've come to the right place. Today's topic is Travel Destinations Fulfilled, based on Deuteronomy chapter 1. When is the last time that someone has surprised you with the gift of travel? If I'm being completely honest, I haven't had someone surprise me with the gift of travel, maybe ever, but definitely not in a long time. They've maybe surprised me with, hey, this weekend we're free and we could travel, or hey, I'd like to visit and come see you. But in terms of someone planning a trip and saying, hey, your bags need to be packed because we're heading out, that hasn't necessarily happened to me. I think of a lot of people that typically happens when they're visiting Disney or some all-inclusive resort destination for an anniversary or some big celebration of life. But in Deuteronomy chapter 1, the gift of a destination, the gift of a future home, is finally being fulfilled. If you go back several weeks, a couple months ago, we started this series looking at times in the ESV translation where scripture uses the word journey. And as you go back, you'll find that the Lord promised Abraham the promised land. Not only that, he promised him multiple generations of children. And yet, it wasn't until his older years that he had a son, and that son got married and had kids, and we follow this whole storyline that eventually leads them from the land of Canaan, the promised land that they were just living as nomads in, to Egypt with Joseph in the coat of many colors when he becomes governor, and his family moves there with him, and then the Israelites become slaves in Egypt. They live in Egypt for 400 years as slaves, and eventually the Lord leads them to the promised land. They don't accept it right away and end up wandering 40 more years, and now we are standing on the edge of of the promised land, and Moses is delivering his very last sermon at the Mount of Sinai, the mountain where the Lord had originally given him the Ten Commandments almost 40 years ago. And now this new generation is listening to Moses as he proclaims the law to the people. And as he reminds them of the Ten Commandments, commandments the Lord gives the people not to prevent them from enjoying the pleasures of life, but as a parent makes rules for a child, the Lord has given us the Ten Commandments as a way to keep us safe and to love us. And so Moses is reminding these Israelites of the Ten Commandments And that the Lord has said, you've waited at this mountain long enough. It is time for you to go take the promised land. There are about 150 miles left to go. About an 11-day journey as the millions of them walk across the land that they will soon conquer. And Moses 
is reminding them not only of their journey, but of what the Lord expects from them. And the Lord says, see, I have set the land before you. Not just that it's directionally ahead of them, but that it has already been given to them. That this promise made generations upon generations ago to Abraham is now finally being fulfilled. That this promise is being fulfilled. That this destination, though unknown to Abraham, how long it would take to get there, they're finally seeing the Lord fulfill this promise. And they get to be the ones to do it. And as they head out there, Moses takes time to remind them of the faults of the previous generation. The previous generation had gotten to the door of the promised land and they'd gone in and they'd explored and they're like, it is a land flowing with milk and honey and it has everything we need. And it's so amazing. But the people that live there, they're giants. How will we ever defeat them? They forgot that the Lord was on their side, that the Lord had already given this land to them. And because of that, the future generation doesn't get to go to the promised land. They wander for 40 years and they pass away. But now, these, this new generation gets to be the one to reach the destination. I originally felt like this was truly a passage about reaching the destination because in many ways it is. It is the Lord fulfilling promises. That is in so much the joy that they're celebrating. And as Moses is giving his last sermon, can you not just feel the emotions, the heartache, the joy, the passion? The heartache that he doesn't get to go and set foot there. The joy that it's finally being fulfilled. The memories of the path that took them there. And the God who's been with them every step of the way. And the excitement that they finally get to go. But what I'm starting to see is that more than all of this, it is the passing of baton from generation to generation. Moses is taking the time to equip this generation with the knowledge that the previous generation had failed with. He's equipping them so that as they enter the promised land that they can do things differently, that they can have a deeper, heartfelt relationship with the Lord. He doesn't want them wandering in there aimlessly and without knowledge. He wants them to know the laws of the Lord and the promises are being fulfilled. When you travel, when you approach a new destination, do you pass that knowledge and truth of the Lord on to the next generation? Do you equip others in the journey? Do you equip them to celebrate with you when the Lord fulfills the promises, when he answers prayers? Do you celebrate with the next generation, if you have kids or grandkids, if you have other people that you could mentor and encourage around you, do you equip and encourage them? I know it's sad how many of us have this long bucket list of places we want to travel to, and sometimes in our lifetime, we may never get there. Sometimes we pass away and our dreams and hopes of seeing a place get passed on to the next person. The things on our bucket list go on. Sometimes when a relative passes away, sometimes in loving memory of them, we finally go and do that thing on their bucket list. We go see that place. We try that new thing that they in their lifetime could never do. And we do it with a memory of the previous generation. We do it in memory of those who've passed on. Do you think that the Israelites, as they walk those last 
11 days, those last 150 miles, do you think that each step felt like a huge change and transition in their life? They were leaving behind Moses who had led them for so long, had led their parents and grandparents. They were leaving behind their parents and grandparents who had been buried in the wilderness. They were walking to the place that their parents had been so hopeful for, so enthralled by for so long. And they're trying to take the life lessons of the previous generation and live them out. To live in relationship with the Lord, in trust. We know because that they're sinful that they'll fail. Just like we will fail to live up to the expectations of the Lord. But we know that our journey is such an important and life-changing and lasting one. And we know that while we might not travel to the destination here on earth, we are traveling to the destination of heaven. More literal than the things on our bucket list that we're fulfilling for those who have passed. We are living, remembering those who've the saints that have died and and gone before us, and we get to celebrate their life and how we live and how we fulfill God's law and how we spread the gospel and how we continue that testimony here on earth and how we look to the day of heaven when we get to be reunited with those who have died before us, who have believed in Jesus as their Savior. There's so much in this little section of scripture, so much encouragement, so much hope, so many raw emotions. I just want to encourage you to take some time to reflect on how the destination we're headed to is heaven, but the legacy we leave and the faith that we follow is part of of the journey. Would you pray with me? Dear Lord, I just lift up these Christian travelers. I ask that you surround them with your love and your guidance, that you may help them focus on eternity, the true destination promise that one day all who believe may get to enjoy with you for eternity. Please help us to focus on that as we leave a legacy of love for you. And we pray. Amen. I have one other thought and question, but before I do, I do want to point you to our website, christiantravelers.net. There you'll find other faith and travel resources, including a way to subscribe to our newsletter. It's a great place to get our podcast into your email once a week. You can also find our travel journal with prompts, questions and prayers to help you plan for your next journey and remember the Lord in the midst of it. Our travel kit, great for groups and ministries to encourage their participants, not only to build team relationships, but to look at travel through the eyes of the Lord. And also our upcoming retreats. These three tools are some of our wonderful ways to help you grow in your faith and to focus on that eternal destination. But without further ado, my closing thought and question is this. Who is on Mount Sinai in your life? Who is preaching to you into your life like Moses was to remind you not only of the law, but also of how the Lord has fulfilled his promises and how he will not forsake you as you continue on your journey? Who is your cheerleader? I encourage you to surround yourself with people who are encouraging you in your faith walk and encouraging you in that life's journey. But not only that, who is reminding you that the destination promise has been fulfilled? Jesus died for our sins so that our destination is no longer hell, 
but for all who believe it is heaven, our heavenly home, and he has gone there, and he is preparing a place for you, and he may come tomorrow. He may come in the next 30 seconds, praise be the Lord. He may come sometime in your lifetime, or he may come in the next generations. But the legacy that you're living, the life that you're living, the way that you're traveling, the way that you're interacting with the world, it does have an impact. I know sometimes we can feel so small and inadequate and insignificant, but it matters. It matters because not only do you need a cheerleader in your life, but you have the opportunity to be a cheerleader in someone else's, to be a witness and an encourager so that God's kingdom grows, so that when judgment day happens and all who are getting to enter the pearly gates are on one side and all who are going to hell are on the other. You may not look across and see the people that you interacted with, the people that were in your life shouting at you, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you let me know? Why didn't you let me know that life is more than a great Instagram with great travel pictures? It's traveling for eternity. Thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. And until next time, safe travels and God bless.